Now the last thing we need to do is to put some threads on this nose. And according to our print, it said it was a one inch diameter, eight threads per inch. So what we're going to do is go up to Tool Pass and select Thread. Now you notice that it's only picking threading tools when we come into the library. Because we're doing a threading operation, we see threading tools. And I'm going to pick this one right here. And we'll add a comment. So let's take a look at the thread shape. Now we know by looking at our print that this is going to be uh, 8 threads per inch. So I could put 8 threads per inch in here and I know it's going to be a 60 degree included angle or 30 degrees on a side and I can put those values in here. I can also tell it the major diameter if I know that and the minor diameter if I know that. But there aren't too many people I know that have all their thread tables memorized so that they can remember their major and minor diameter or remember what the thread depth is supposed to be. So because you can't remember all that stuff we're going to say select from table. There's a threading table that's built into Mastercam. So when I pick select from table up here it gives us a list of thread forms. So from here I can pick different standards for threads. There's American pipe threads, there's buttress threads, there's Acme threads, and there's a variety of unified threads. So we're going to go with the default UNRC, UNRF threads. And here it shows the major diameter. So we're going to slide down until we find our one inch. So there's a one inch with eight threads per inch and a one inch with 12 threads per inch. Well, we want one inch eight. So when I OK this, it's automatically going to fill in all of these values for us. The only thing we really have to tell it is our starting position and our ending position. And for my starting position, I could pick right off the geometry by hitting the Start Position button, but I know I want to start from about 200 thousandths off the front of the part. But for my end position, I don't really know where I want the thread to end. So I'm going to press the end position button, brings me to the graphics area, where I can zoom up a little bit and we'll say that I want it to end right here at the end of that little fillet in the corner. So it takes the Z dimension right from that geometry. Now let's take a look at the thread cut parameters. Here we could tell it that we want to output this as a can cycle, which is what most people want to do but you can also output it as a box type thread alternating. There's also longhand. So this will output all the X, Z coordinates to create a thread. The most compact type of NC code is to use the CAN cycle. Here we could tell it the amount for the last cut, which is a thousandths, and if we want to take a spring cut, it'll take one free spring cut. So that's pretty much all we need. We're going to say OK. And there's our threading toolpath. So next, with my cursor in the Operations Manager window, I'm going to hit the letter E on my keyboard to collapse all of these toolpaths, make it a little more compact in the window. And then I'll click on the toolpath group to select all the operations and we'll take a look at this in Verify. And I'm going to set my moves per step and moves per refresh to 1 and 1. Turn my quality all the way up. I'm going to use my mouse to rotate around a little bit and we'll zoom up on the part and we'll hit Machine. There's my part. And again, we could easily do a cross section to see what that's going to look like. So, with this part, we were able to see again how to draw geometry from a print. 
We also saw how to import a CAD file, a two-dimensional CAD file, and to be able to select the geometry that we need from that drawing in order to create our toolpath. And we learned about how to allow the tool to do undercuts and threading.